usually when we switch a load on and off in power electronic circuit we use power switches like MOSFETs we apply a voltage between the gate and source to switch the MOSFET and that controls the current in the load to be like this a clean edge with no oscillation however if we consider the parasitics of the system like the wires the PCB traces inductances and the MOSFET capacitances something different might appear and the switching will start be exposed to oscillation due to L's and C's resonance in the system the peak of the oscillation might exceed MOSFET's breakdown voltage and damage it it also might create EMI problems and challenge the circuit to pass the EMC test how we rid off or mitigate this oscillation and reduce its impact on the system the answer we have in this video is through a snapper circuit basically it's a circuit being put across the MOSFET what are the components and how to select them this is what we're gonna cover in this video so stay tuned this video is sponsored by Altium Altium is a very professional software that can make your PCB design easier and faster and I would like to mention Altium 365 which is already integrated in the designer software and enables you to share your design not just only with your colleagues but anybody in the world so why not you give it a try for free by clicking on the link down below and to learn more about Altium you can access their YouTube channel Altium Academy where they publish a lot of tutorials and hints and also Altium has Octopart which enables you to know the availability of some pieces and components and the footprint and other libraries that related to these components to demonstrate the concept I'm using here Altispice to simulate a MOSFET switching a resistive load and considering a parasitic inductance the voltage source is 12 volt here by propping the drain to source voltage we see here a high spike reaching 65 volt while the maximum voltage for this MOSFET is 60 volt that means we might push our MOSFET outside its safe operating area to damp this oscillation let's start adding a capacitor across the drain to source a value of 10 nanofarad decrease the peak to less than about 50 volt a value of 50 nanofarad decrease the peak to less than about 25 volt and both damp in the oscillation a value of 100 nanofarad decrease the peak to less than 20 volt and provide a satisfactory response so that means if we increase that capacitance that would bring less peak and damp in the oscillation and yes it's right but if we look at the energy when the MOSFET turns off that capacitor starts to charge and when we turn the MOSFET off the capacitor discharges all the energy through that MOSFET that might stress the MOSFET exceeds the current rating and increase the switching losses larger capacitors will bring higher losses so here we bought a 500 nanofarad capacitor and that eliminated the oscillation completely but what about the losses this chart shows how much loss we have when we increase the snubber capacitance so we have a trade of for the capacitance selection between the energy loss and the peak and oscillation damping another design uses a series resistance with the capacitor to distribute the loss between the MOSFET and the resistance while charging and discharging the resistance will dissipate power as I squared times R so by this way the losses by the MOSFET will be reduced but this resistance will decrease the speed of the capacitor charging and discharging in case of adding a 5 ohm for example in series with a 100 nanofarad capacitor that would bring much lower losses in the MOSFET and also achieves a good damping but the circuit is not bringing a higher efficiency as the energy is also lost in that resistor from this calculation we can also estimate the power rating of this resistance a 0.5 watt resistance is enough here to decrease the stress on the resistor and increase the speed of damping a diode might be added in parallel to that resistor when the MOSFET turns off the current starts commuting through that diode to charge the capacitor directly so damping the oscillation when switching the MOSFET on the diode will be reverse biased and the capacitor charge will go through just the resistor 
So the resistor here dissipates half of the energy compared with the case without the diode. But is there a practical way to determine the values of the resistance and capacitance of the snubber circuit? Here I'm sharing with you a document from Roham titled snubber circuit for buck converters but i think it's more applicable here as well it says that you can observe the primary oscillation in your circuit appears between the drain and source and you measure the oscillation frequency and we call it fr then you connect a capacitor we will call it here cpo between the drain and source that will decrease the ringing frequency by a factor of two this means fr over 2. From this capacitance value and ringing frequency, you can estimate the parasitic capacitance CP2 by this equation. Then we can estimate the parasitic inductance LP also by this equation. And we can calculate the characteristic impedance of the resonance by this equation. For me, as a rule of thumb to start with, the snubber circuit can be chosen to be CPO which decreased the ringing frequency to half or few multiple of that. For the snubbing resistor, it could be equal to the characteristic impedance Z. And we should take care of power rating that can be calculated using this equation. I will use Altium here to design a testing board for different experiments on MOSFETs and to demonstrate the snubber circuit as well. The circuit has basically a MOSFET and TD20 and 06 with a rating of 60 volt and 20 ampere and 37.5 milliohm as on state resistance. I'm putting here a 10 microfarad inductor to simulate a high parasitic inductance. Some of the components shown here will not be populated, but will be inserted based on the conducted test. This is how the full circuit look like in Altium. And this is when I converted that to PCB. If you want more details about making such a kit, please comment below and I will do another detailed video. I sent this board to PCB manufacturer and received it like this. It is golden plated and with the black color it looks fascinating. I laid off the solder paste, then I populated the necessary basic components and kept the snubber circuit footprints as free. Then solder the components using the hot air, and this is how it looks. I will use just one MOSFET for this test. I connected a 12 volt lamp as a load. I connected the circuit to a signal generator to provide between the gate and source the PWM signal and hooked up the oscilloscope probe to obtain the drain to source voltage. After turning on the power supply, which is the 12 volt and initiating the signal generator, the voltage across the MOSFET appears on the oscilloscope. It is clear that the voltage spikes reach over 80 volt, which is considered as high for that MOSFET. For the ringing frequency, it's measured as 3.87 MHz. We will start inserting random values of capacitances to decrease this frequency by a factor of 2. By putting 470 picofarad, the ringing frequency is about 1.97 MHz, which is about a half. By the same set of equations, we can estimate the parasitic capacitances as 156 picofarad. And the parasitic inductance is about 10 microhenry, which is already what we have in our circuit. The resonance impedance is 253 ohm, which might be considered as high and its loss is also high. Let's start with 2.2 nanofarad as a snubber capacitance, which is multiple of the 470 picofarad and resistance of 220 ohm. We can engage the snubber by this jumper. The waveform shows that the spike is still very high, but the resonance has disappeared and dampened completely. This is how it looks with and without the snubber. But still the spike is not desirable. Another set is chosen to be a resistance of 5 ohms and a capacitor of 100 nanofarad. The waveform shows a high damping of the peak and oscillation as well. And this is how it looks with and without the snubber circuit. Maybe it's a better option, but more consideration should be taken for the switching losses. So here I started with the calculation that was in the document, but I deviated that based on my experience and my observation 
from the oscilloscope waveforms. And I hope you find it beneficial for you. If you like to know more about power electrons and circuit, please consider looking at my course on Udemy, which is Basics of Power Electronics. It teaches you how to use AltiSpice and simulate different DC to DC converters and consider also the thermal dissipation and design of different converters. And also, it introduces you to silicon, silicon carbide, and gallium nitride switches. And if you like to know more, please consider looking at the links in the description below. I hope you find this video enjoyable. So if you do, like, share, and subscribe, please. And see you in the next video. Thank you.